nothing gets me more excited than a built-in tape deck. A long, long time ago, and I mean a very long time ago, pre-event, I was on eBay one evening and I spotted this. Well, hey, it's a Sony <laughs> Hitbit and it's a HB501P. And you might be thinking, well, Chin, if you saw this in like 2019 or whatever it was, possibly 2018, actually, why are you now showing it in 2023? And the answer is, I got it and it didn't work. Uh, I had dead keys on the keyboard and the joystick ports were dead. I opened it up and there was evidence of a botched repair on the joystick ports and this was screwing everything up. And to cut a long story short, I sent the unit away. Uh, it went uh, to somewhere, uh, where weren't able to repair it and then it got sent somewhere else and they repaired it. It came back this time last year. At the same time, I got that Japanese Panasonic MSX2. And that was so exciting. I went, oh, you know, I'm going to do that review first. And I can't do another MSX review soon. So, yeah, here we are in 2023. But we have this. It is, it is a rather lovely <laughs> um, machine that I saw on eBay that evening that isn't from the UK. We know that because it comes with a Constantial plug on it um, but look at this built-in cassette deck like an Amstrad CPC um, all really rather nice um, and it's got this little the usual cursor uh, things here but actually if you look on the back it has on the back there a little uh, thing oh where what you do plug that in there and ta-da, it's like a Enterprise or something. It's uh, It's got a little joystick port there. Obviously, it's going to break in two seconds, but you could, in theory... I mean, uh, no decathlon. Not there is any decathlon on the MSX. No hypersports. Um, but, yeah, so that's uh, rather nice. Let's have a closer look. On the top corner here, we have a cassette deck. It doesn't have a proper eject button for the top there. Uh, uh, you have to flip it up like that, uh, but it will, if you press the stop button fully down, it will push your tape up so it comes out. You've got all your buttons there that you'd expect, save, load, record, uh, sorry, rewind, fast forward, stop, uh, and uh, mute, which is obviously the pause button. You have a tape, I'll leave that open so it doesn't reflect off the lights. Tape counter there, you've got a monitor switch which is missing on here, but you can get a little screwdriver now and adjust it. That means the you can hear the tape playing back. A load save operation LED. You've got the usual MSX cursor keys down there, all the way down. All the usual kind of standard MSX stuff. You've got this little joystick thing here, which actually I'm going to take off before I lose it. Put it there. Uh, two cartridge ports are standard. I, are they micro switch like the Panasonic? I've got all these Philips. I can't remember which one. No, they're not. Because some of the MSXs have little micro switches in there that mean you can't live plug them because it will detect and it will just turn the machine off. Um, you have two joystick ports on the side there, as you'd expect. All the standard MSX stuff you'd be hoping for like the 75B a SCART socket, but you'd be wrong. You've just got the basic MSX stuff, which also includes uh, composite video only on the AV there, UHF, the grounding cable they like to have, and the printer port there, and no extra cartridge port at the back, because they're both on the top. And you've got your little hole there for the joystick holder. Oh, and because it's an MSX, it's got built-in power supply, and it weighs a tonne. It really does. And an on off switch there. It is an MSX1. It has 64K of RAM. And, you know, it, it's a fairly standard MSX. Of course, it is a Sony, as it points out there. And it's not German because it doesn't have those, uh, that's a strange 
keyboard layout that my other machine has that clearly I bought from Holland, but uh, clearly came from Germany because it has the umlauts and all the rest of it. Whereas this one has a, what I call a Latin, you know, Latin keyboard. I don't know what you call it. UK QWERTY keyboard. So which part of Europe this came from? I've got no idea because unusually, as I say, this turned up on UK eBay Somewhere along the East Coast, I think it was, Lincolnshire, somewhere like that, and came with two joysticks, uh, and that was it. Now, this is the P model, and if you have an F model instead of the P, that means it's the model intended for France, and it will have a SCART socket on it. Keyboard is of excellent quality, as you'd expect from Sony. The, these are not so good, though, these function keys, and... One quality issue with these is the bit corder at the top here. It is pretty flimsy and cheap feeling, and that extends to the mechanics inside. I had to replace the drive belts on this, and it was, yeah, a, quite a job. And I mean quite a job. There's three of them, and when this came back from repair from Mutant Caterpillar, who were the people who eventually were able to fix it for me, they said... Don't use the tape deck too much because it's, it's, it's just quite <laughs> fragile. The rest of the unit's very well built, but um, these tape decks are quite fragile and you may find it throws a belt or something. So yeah, um, if you do have one, take care. And as I say, placing those belts is very fiddly and involving. I'm not going to give you a full lecture on the MSX computer standard because we've done that enough times on Chinivision. Suffice to say... It is a load of Japanese electronics manufacturers and Philips as well in Europe getting together with Microsoft and saying, hey, we want to do a world computer standard for home computers like the IBM PC. And therefore, any manufacturer who adhered to the standard could put the MSX logo on their computer, but everyone made different machines. So you've got all sorts of different MSXs from cheap Casios, which look like a kind of spectrum almost, and very kind of cheaply constructed inside, right up to the Sony stuff, which is kind of on the level of their hi-fi, and of course, the it's a Sony. And while I'm here, I want to thank the person, and then they'll know who they are. They won't want their name mentioned, who got this machine to Mutant Caterpillar for me and got it all sorted out. And thank you to Mutant Caterpillar as well. It is really appreciated, and I'm really sorry it's taken this long to review the unit, I genuinely thought this was going to be something for last summer and then just that Japanese MSX turned up and I just couldn't resist it. Okay, let's have a look underneath and inside. It does weigh a ton, but it is a Sony and as I said earlier, the power supply is built in. So it looks like I've got five screws to undo. And you're probably saying, Chini, why do you keep buying MSX machines? And the answer is because they're, they're kind of interesting that you get all these different manufacturers doing their own thing. Uh, you get Sony that's really well built. You might get Casio that's really cheap and, uh, and, and not very well built. And, you know, you get a built-in tape recorder on this one as I reach over here, probably off mic. And this was before I had, well, this, I got this, I think, before I got that Panasonic. Um, so this, this was quite a while ago that I, I originally came in. So, you know, it, it was intended for a video. I thought, you know, as soon as I saw that built-in tape recorder, I went, oh, yeah, 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 we'll have some of that. What I'm expecting is something incredibly well-built. None of that cost down stuff of that of my Sony MSX2 with this kind of video recorder style single-sided board where Sony have gone, hang on a minute, we can't throw a load of money at this anymore. We need to make these computers cheaper to make more money. Now I'm expecting um, something, oh, don't do that. Don't do that at all. One second. I have to be professional and know what I was doing. All right. Oh, that bit cord is all going to be... See, the problem with having done this years ago and opened it up then is now I can't remember how it opens. 
if there's any hidden gubbins or yeah, that's out, that screws out, that screws out. Which way does it lift? Gosh, it's heavy. Are there clips I need to find? <laughs> Think I've got it. Oh, that bit cord is in the top, of course, is. Oh, hang on. This is going to be a. Uh... Yeah, this is interesting. Oh, this is involved. This is involved. We've got, oh dear, we've got all sorts of things going on here. How did I do this last time? Crikey. It is a single sided board, though. It's like the MSX2 I had, or I have. Connected. Can I just flip it? Ah, oh, right, okay. Okay, 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 right, okay. I'm not going to get this in too much detail because I can't leave the... I can't really move the camera given I'm holding the top of the MSX open. I really don't want to start um, undoing this in more. I've clearly done it in the past because I've been inside, but I just don't fancy it. It is like the MSX2. A single-sided ball with all these links all over it. We have... What can we see? What you can't see is the repair that the Mutant Caterpillar have done because you have to take off the entire thing and the heat shield and you can see all the bodged wiring... Uh, sorry, connectors down there that they will have had to have repaired because it, it was a mess. It was a mess. Lovely touch here. See those in the Sony's, the keyboard support there in the middle. Makes the keyboard feel more solid when you're typing on it. Power supply over there. Um, pull me out a bit. So yeah, all your heat will be generated over here. Some plastic shielding on the over the switch. Um, not too many caps on. Uh, there's a few around the board. That all those will have been checked and sorted. So that's absolutely fine if there are any problems. Um, we've got a socketed NEC that I can't see upside down what it is. I'm imagining. I can't see. Sorry. Um, it's just, there's the MSX custom chip. Over there, got an ASIC in there. Uh, that gives you a look of what's inside. I'm not going to. We've been over enough MSXs to show you what's what's involved. Uh, but it's interesting to see a single-sided board with all the uh, the kind of solder joints the other side between the board and the heat shield. I wonder if that's to do with um. Because look at the, oh, look at all this shielding. You don't get that with many computers, do you? And just look underneath here, if you can see that back end of that bit quarter there. Two cables running down from it uh, that I've unplugged to access the top. That's what you need to service, and it is not user-friendly at all. You have to unmount that thing and then get in to get the belts. It, it, was, it was precisely no fun at all. I'd have loved to have shown you all the solder work that Mutant Caterpillar will have fixed. You've even got things like a, a grounding shield there between there and the keyboard. Keyboard is a proper... You know, for all this cut cutting here, that is a proper circuit board, not a membrane type of keyboard. So again, Sony doing their best. Obviously, um, that one there is going to be power because that comes with the power supply for the bit quarter. That must be the data return and send uh, down to their keyboard connector there. And that's got to be power coming across from there. Interestingly, you've got a couple of bodge wires here as well. <laughs> Sony, are they bodge wires? Is it, is it just cheaper than doing a proper double-sided board? I don't know. You've got a wire running there to there and you've got a wire running around there. Um, yeah, it's strange to see a board like this, isn't it? In a in a computer with only single sided, it must apparently this is cheaper. It smells very nineteen eighties computer, which apparently is a bad sign because apparently um, that's all the bad stuff I'm told coming out. Never mind. Plug the machine in, and I'm on the composite output. Of course, there's only composite and UHF on this machine, and you get the familiar MSX Basic screen. Light blue background, white text. Checking the keyboard works because, of course, it didn't before it went to, to Mutant Caterpillar to be repaired. So thanks to them. There's not many MSX ones that have RGB. So we are on composite. 
Of course, there's a HitBit 75B, which actually has a problem with its RGB output. It goes very blue. Um, and there's a Toshiba as well, I think, which is quite rare. MSX2 machines do have RGB. Loading Road Fighter running, the cartridge Konami game. And of course, cartridge games by Konami are where the MSX is all about. You have two groups of games, really. Japanese games that came on cartridge or disc. And then British games like here, like Chucky Egg, which is a pretty good conversion, actually. But many British games and European games are very dodgy Spectrum ports. But Chucky Egg's done properly. Look at this. It's lovely. In fact, I'd go as far to, as to say this is one of the best versions of Chucky Egg with lots of color, lovely animation on the sprites. But of course, this will run on any, any MSX system. Checking if the bit corder is working. So I'm going to try and load Feud off my original cassette. Mutant Caterpillar did say, don't use the tape deck too much, and I won't be. But uh, I do want to see if it's loading. So I'm hoping it does. Fast forwarding on. And yes, Feud has loaded. Great port on the MSX. Of course, we've covered so many MSX games before, and they run on all of the systems. Well, MSX ones games run on MSX ones. MSX two games require an MSX two, but there's such a great and diverse library of games that you can play. I check out my 50 MSX games reviewed in under 10 minutes video from a couple of years ago, possibly three years ago during COVID. Sorry, the event where I show quite a lot of MSX games. It's not always the obvious titles. It is quite often obscure Japanese titles that you want to be looking at. But this isn't a bad composite output. It's nice and colourful. Yes, it's got all the usual composite issues. But frankly, this is as good as you're going to get from this machine. But I believe the MSX custom chip does not output raw RGB. It outputs Y and C which you'll need to get into RGB. S-Video is probably a far better bit. I wonder if anyone's done an S-Video mod. So in all, really, this is just another MSX, kind of like you were probably thinking at the start, but it does have this party trick of the built-in tape recorder. It is a Sony, so it's got that lovely feel about it, just the weight of it. I know there's other MSXs that are nice and weighty, but I mean, this thing with the power supply at that end as well. Goodness me, goodness me, it's, it's really really beefy and just the aesthetic of it i guess that's why i have so many msx machines because i just like having different aesthetics i don't want to stare at a load of spectrums and commodore 64s as much as i love spectrums and commodore 64s and cpcs actually you'll see all these different designs from these japanese manufacturers who go hey let's let's do this let's stick a tape recorder on the top whether they were influenced by amstrad or not who knows but the thing is it's just a nice machine to have and a rare one. You know, we use that term in the UK, rare. Um, what is rare? Well, this it's probably probably does come in, into it in terms of UK stuff, because I don't see these around. You see certain types of MSX machines, the Toshibas, for example, um, other Sonys, uh, but ones with built-in tape recorders, no. And that's because I doubt it was ever sold in the UK to begin with so again the clue is always it has a European power supply on the end but yeah I'm, I'm pleased to have it I'm sorry it's taken so long to get a review done but it's not going to be a daily driver MSX for that I prefer my MSX2 with this RGB output but yeah just for the cool factor alone certainly glad I've got it